spining, splining, or strong side? Yes. But I'll explain in a second. Last week I had a question from a subscriber about splining a blank, spining a blank, strong side. Yes, they all mean exactly the same thing. You're looking for the natural bend of a blank. And they had a question about where do you put it on the top of the rod or the bottom of the rod? So I thought to myself, I've been pretty clear about that. Or maybe I haven't. And then they said, the reason they were confused is that they were watching some other videos and they couldn't figure it out. So I'm like, okay. I didn't learn to build rods watching videos. Um, I did the old school way. I read books. I watched a couple demos, took a class, and I was fortunate enough to have two very experienced rod builders kind of take me under their wing and answer all of my stupid questions. Because this was back before YouTube was YouTube. Uh, so last weekend, I had some downtime. I did some charity events. So it was a lot of me sitting around waiting for somebody else to do something before I could do the next thing. So I pulled out my phone, I searched spine and a rod, and I was confused. Now, let's pretend for a minute that I don't have many years of college in engineering and 37 years of experience in engineering and physics and materials management. Let's talk about common sense. Here's a blank. This is a 8357 90 NFC blank. It's a 7.6 medium heavy moderate bend flip and stick. Uh, heavy worm rod. So we find the spline, you know, by putting a load on it and the blank is going to, on its own, jump to where it wants to be bent. That is what I call the spine. I ain't call it what you want, but it is the natural bend point of the blank. Now that is bending back towards you. This, what I call a spine, will go on the bottom of the rod. So your trigger will be down here. It doesn't matter if you're wrapping spiral or conventional. Your stem, the bottom of your spinning seat, will be down here. So the rod bends in the direction that it naturally wants to. Now let me show you why that's important. This is my pretend heavy, heavy, heavy flipping stick and a pretty good fish on the end of it. Now, what happens, especially with a conventionally wrapped rod, is the guides are on the top, so the line is slightly above the blank. Now, when you load this, it's going to want to turn on its own until the load is below the blank. Okay? We take care of most of that problem when I do a spiral wrap. But imagine if you had the natural bend point on the top of the blank and you have a conventionally wrapped rod. When you load this with a fish, either it's two pounds of fish and 10 pounds of weeds or a 10 pound fish, the blank is going to want to do that. Now, that's where most of your mysterious tip breaks come from. It's not from the screen doors. It's not from ceiling fans. It's not because you stepped on it, although those are valid reasons that you will have a break. That break that happens three to six inches from your tip comes from that rotational torque and it not being managed properly. Now, I'm not saying all those videos that showed putting the spine on the top were wrong. I'm just saying I disagree. And I'm disagreeing from a common sense standpoint as well as some serious engineering experience over the last 37 years. Spine your blank or call it whatever you want to call it, but you need to find the natural bend point. That natural bend point is the bottom of your rod. 
I hope that clears things up. Keep the questions coming. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.